When we hear of astronauts heading up into space, one of the most common descriptors of their environment while in orbit is zero G, which implies zero gravity. What if I told you that is just one fat lie? Welcome. My name is Precision. I'm not a doctor or an expert, but I do love to learn about things. And when I learn something pretty cool, I'd like to share it with you guys. Now back to that little blue ball we call Earth. And why describing our astronauts as being in zero G is technically incorrect. Really, that fact should be intuitive if we ignore everything we are simply told and think for ourselves. How can the astronauts be in zero gravity and in orbit? They're not further away from Earth than the moon is. And the moon is within reach of Earth's gravity because that's how it's trapped there. Let's define an orbit. According to NASA, who are probably experts on the subject, an orbit is a regular repeating path that one object in space takes around another. What determines this path? An object's momentum and the force of gravity have to be balanced for an orbit to happen. Thus, if our astronauts upon the ISS were not bound by any gravity, they could not maintain this orbit around the Earth and they would fly off to a lonely, cold demise. So what is happening? I'm going to keep things in terms of Earth since we reside here and it is most relevant to us, but the same principles can be applied to anybody with a mass in space. Let's look at this fact about Earth. Around the equator, there is a much larger distance to rotate than at the North and South Poles. This means that, in order for Earth to rotate evenly, the closer you get to the equator, the faster you are rotating. The difference is actually quite staggering with people on the equator moving nearly 300 miles per hour, or 400 kilometers an hour, faster at 1,036 miles per hour, or 1,667 kilometers an hour, than Santa and Rudolph are on the North Pole at a measly 792 miles, or 1,275 kilometers per hour. This has a super interesting effect, which is that people on the equator actually weigh less than they would anywhere else on Earth. This outward force that counteracts gravity is referred to as centrifugal force. Because of Earth's centrifugal force, gravity's effect on the equator is 9.764 meters per second squared, while at the poles, gravity has a higher effect at 9.863 meters per second squared. This different means you weigh about 1% less on the equator than you would on the poles. You can do the math yourself, take any given mass and multiply it once by 9764 and then do it again using 9863. You will obviously get two different numbers and that would be your weight at those locations on Earth for the given mass. So now that we know speed can reduce our weight, it is not then inconceivable to ask how fast must I go to weigh nothing. Well, it turns out that on the equator, this required speed is about five miles per second or eight kilometers a second. Why this speed? Well, here on Earth, if you are traveling at about five miles per second, you are actually moving faster than the curvature of the Earth can keep up to you. This puts you in a permanent free fall, which in turn makes you weightless. Now, of course, Doing this at a surface is dangerous and takes a lot more energy to maintain than in space. There are mountains, cities, trees, and countless other obstacles you can run into. Not to mention an atmosphere that causes friction on any force moving through it, which would burn you up in an instant. To avoid these potential catastrophes, let's move out away from the surface and out where we can find a much thinner atmosphere. This is where you will find the International Space Station in what we refer to as low Earth orbit. Perfectly gravitationally bound, but moving fast enough around the curvature of terra firma in order to remain in a constant free fall, completing a rotation around the planet about once every 88 minutes. The ISS is moving at slightly under 5 miles per second, at about 4.76 miles per second, but that is because as your distance from Earth extends, the required speed necessary to maintain free fall goes down. You can take this principle and extend it out to other orbits. For example, geostationary orbit is where a satellite can maintain its position over a set place on Earth by matching the rotation of the Earth. Here, you can maintain this speed at a measly 1.9 miles per second 
or 3.12 kilometers per second. So the next time you hear a news reporter or someone at a totally cool party talking about how astronauts are living in zero G, bust out a napkin and do some math to show them that they're wrong. You'll make tons of new friends for it, I promise. Thank you for sitting through this video. I know it's different than what I normally post, but as usual, we are live over at twitch.tv slash precision every night playing games. If you enjoyed this video and want to see some more like it in the future, please subscribe. That helps a ton and gives me a little bit of feedback. And if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that this wasn't completely useless. Seriously, if you're still here, guys, thank you so much. All sources will be linked in the description. Feel free to leave any thoughts, questions, or topics for future videos down in the comments. And I cannot wait to catch you in the next one.